point of view that is Shannon's first theory. Okay, Shannon is basically the father of information theory. He is a scientist. Okay, he has introduced two different theorems with respect to noiseless coding and source coding. Okay. first theorem is based on noiseless coding and second theorem is based on source coding which we are going to see in the upcoming uh, part of this module but before that this part that is the noiseless coding part is very important so that's why i thought to do it in this video what do you mean by that we are having some conclusions based on that we are going to be generating the shannon's algorithm as well based on that shannon's algorithm shannon's encoding algorithm they are going to be asking some problems so those problems you are going to be seeing in the upcoming video before that you need to be knowing what do you mean by this shannon's algorithm and theorem okay so yeah please uh, watch this video till the end like this video your like would be very very important to us it would be motivating us so please like this okay so let us get started now shannon's first theorem shannon suggested that the length of code word can be obtained using the formula l suffix k okay so this is the standard formula in which we could be calculating the length of the code okay code word so that is l suffix k and that is defined as l suffix k is equal to log of 1 by pk to the base r okay r is represented in terms of array units okay but as i have told you right we are not going to be dealing with the uh, base r we are mainly going to be dealing with base 2 so that's why i don't need to worry about it just for your information this thing is written here okay it is not uh, uh, necessary to remember now from the above equation it signifies that larger the value of probability smaller will be the value of the length of the uh, code word l of k okay and few encoding bits would be sufficient that is larger the probability smaller the l of k since they are inversely proportional to each other uh, now if the value of l of k is not an integer it can be rounded up to the next value okay so the value of l of k should always be an integer that is uh, it cannot be the decimal values so if we get the decimal values we should be rounded rounded it or you should be rounding that number off to the next value that is for example while solving the problem if you get the decimal value such as uh, 1.2 or 1.3 the next value closer to this is 2 right so like that you should be rounding it off to the next value okay so that is called as rounded rounding off so because l of k cannot be an uh, decimal number it should be an integer okay now log of 1 by pk is less than or equal to lk is less than or equal to 1 plus log of 1 by pk okay so this is the continuous sequence with respect to l of k that i have written it here converting r into base 2 here so what i have done is now i have just divided in order to convert this base r to base 2 we should be doing log 1 by pk base 2 divided by log r base 2 okay so this term i have converted it to this form here note it down this remains as it is here also 1 plus log base r is there so that's why log base 2 1 by pk divided by log r base 2 okay so that's one change i've done it now multiplying the throughout equation by p of k and along with that you should be taking the summation k equal to 1 to q if you do that what you would be getting that is 1 by that is uh, this term 1 by log 2 log uh, r base 2 that is common i've kept it outside i've introduced the summation that is summation of k equal to 1 to q and uh, you should be multiplying it with pk log base 2 1 by pk okay and if you see this term corresponds to entropy so that's why i've written the h of s here less than or equal to summation of k equal to 1 to q pk times lk which is less than or equal to summation of k equal to 1 to q pk plus 1 by log r base 2 summation of k equal to 1 to q pk log base 2 1 by pk why because here since i have introducing pk here so that's why pk into 1 separately i have written it and pk into this term separately i have written it by taking 1 by log r base 2 common here okay here also this term is equal to entropy so do the necessary substitution that is 1 by log r base 2 into h of s uh, less than or equal to summation of k equal to 1 to q pk lk no, keep this keep this in mind whatever this term is there that would be equal to l okay where this l corresponds to the average length okay so with respect to the 
and length of the code was generated this is the main formula which you need to be noting it down that is average length l okay for all the problems it is common it is given by l is equal to summation of k equal to 1 to q pk into l of k l of k is the length of the code word and this is the average length that is capital l okay okay so that is replaced by l here less than or equal to 1 that is this is equal to 1 right so that's why 1 plus 1 by log r base 2 again this is h of s okay simplify it h of s by log r base 2 is less than or equal to l which is less than or equal to 1 plus h of s divided by log r base 2 okay so this equation is there name it as equation a now we know that h of s divided by log r base 2 if we can can be written as h r of s okay why because it is in array unit so we could be simply neglecting this log function and writing directly at h r of s now equation a becomes h r of s is less than or equal to l less than or equal to 1 plus h r of s so if you compare this equation this is the next value so that's why the value of l would be strictly greater than or equal to h r of s so this is one conclusion that is average length of the code word would be greater than or equal to the array entropy whatever form that is h r of s now to improve the efficiency the source has to be extended that is nth extension has to be done okay in order to improve the efficiency so what i've done is i've just uh, in place of h r of s i've written it as h s to the power n divided by log r base 2 is less than or equal to l less than or equal to 1 plus h s to the power n log r base 2 okay now here this is this also can be written as n times h of s here so that's why i've replaced it by n, n times h of s and uh, re rewritten this equation now in this equation you need to be dividing the entire equation by n so after dividing what we get if you divide the entire equation by n the n term goes here so we are left with h of s divided by log r base 2 less than or equal to l by n less than or equal to 1 by n plus this n term goes h of s divided by log r base 2 okay so this can be written as h r of s here also this can be written as h r of s so if we compare it h r of s less than or equal to l by n plus the next value of the incremented value of h r of s that is 1 by n plus h r of s so that's why we could be saying that l by n is greater than or equal to h r of s so now for this above equation take the limits where uh, the extended value of n the uh, nth extension would be tending to infinity so if we do this equation where n tends to infinity we would be getting uh, greater than sign would be going on and would, go, would be going and we could be equating the term that is h r of s would be equal to limit of n tending to infinity l by n okay so given a code with r symbols and source with q alphabets the average length of code per symbol can be made arbitrarily close to the lower bound that is h r of s and it, it can be of as desired by the source extension okay so based on that this equation is uh, concluded note it down so now with respect to that there are two more terms which are getting formed with respect to shannon's theorem that is source efficiency and redundancy okay so if we compare it with the entropy the it varies here for entropy we are we were having the maximum value here so that is replaced by the average code word length in case of shannon's theorem okay so source efficiency is given by n neta is equal to h of s divided by l into 100 and redundancy remains the same that is 1 minus n okay so this is all about shannon's first theorem getting the canal capacity of a binary symmetric channel so go through it next now let us get to the concept of channel coding theorem okay this is very important channel coding theorem we state shannon's second theorem as the channel coding theorem in two parts okay so there are basically two parts which in which we could be defining this first is let a discrete memoryless source with alphabet s have entropy h of s for random variables s and produce symbols once in every t suffix n seconds that is t suffix s is the interval with respect to the discrete memoryless source now let a discrete memoryless source have the channel uh, have this capacity c and used every once in t suffix c seconds okay so this is with respect to the channel capacity then the uh, some one variable is defined as h of s divided by ts is less than or equal to c divided by tc okay so this is the first relation with respect to the 
channel coding theorem which is related to discrete memoryless source and the uh, discrete memoryless channel okay it is given by the entropy condition of h of s divided by ts is less than or equal to c divided by tc so this you note it down there exists a coding scheme for which the source output can be transmitted over the channel and can be reconstructed with an arbitrarily small probability of error okay the parameter c divided by tc here is called as critical rate okay so this parameter which they are which they have mentioned here so that this capacity divided by t suffix c is called as critical rate okay when above equation is satisfied with the equality sign that is if there is no less than or equal to and directly if these two terms are equal the system is said to be signaling at the critical rate signaling means it is uh, moving with respect to the change in the critical rate okay so conversely if h of s divided by ts is greater than c by tc it is not possible to transmit information over the channel and reconstruct it with an arbitrarily small probability of error the reconstruction of signals with respect to the uh, coding patterns is not possible because the entropy uh, whatever the entropy condition is there with respect to the time interval that is greater than the channel capacity right so that's why we would be getting arbit it, it cannot be getting reconstructed with respect to the changes in probability of error so these two conditions are there now the channel coding theorem is the single most important result of information theory this theorem specifies that the channel capacity as a fundamental limit on the rate at which the transmission of reliable error free messages can take place over a discrete memoryless channel okay so this is the conclusion we take through the channel coding theorem so please uh, go through it and read it once so this was all about channel coding theorem guys so please uh, pause the video and note it down